my app open. Good afternoon and welcome. We're so pleased to see you here in the audience today. We have a panel of wonderful presenters to share excellent programs and products with you. My name is Allison Levy, and I work for the U.S. Access Board, a very small federal U.S. agency that helps uh, develop standards and regulations about accessibility in the United States, uh, both for the built environment, such as buildings and streets and transportation and medical diagnostic equipment, and also information and communication technology. So I'm very honored today to help facilitate this panel to uh, share with you four wonderful professionals from around the world. Uh, I should, oh, I have one more thing about myself. I am hard of hearing myself and know American Sign Language, but not international sign language yet. Um, but I wanted to share I'm a person with disabilities because most people don't know that. So moving forward, I want to first introduce to my left, Makaiko, Makaiko, Kayimba. Yeah. Kayimba? Yeah. Okay. And he is from Malawi. He is an education technical coordinator with an organization called World Vision. He'll be speaking about the project T365 Digital Books Project. He is originally from Malawi. Uh, grew up there, went to school except for a master's program in which he attended uh, in Durban, South Africa. He has also worked as a high school teacher, a head teacher, uh, and also worked in a hospital as an HIV AIDS coordinator. He has also worked with World Vision Malawi in different positions and sectors. Currently, he works in the education department supervising 13 technical staff with an annual budget of $2 million. Next, I'll introduce to his left, Tiago Maratan from Brazil. He's an associate professor from the Federal University of Pariba. Please forgive my pronunciations. We're, <laughs> I'm not as familiar with different uh, languages. He works on a project titled Digital Video Applications Lab. Is it L-A-V-I-D or Lavid? Lavid. Lavid. Okay. So Tiago comes to us. Uh, he has degrees in undergraduate and master's degrees in uh, computer science from the Federal University of Paraba, Pariba, Pariba, and a PhD in computer engineering from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte. He is currently an associate professor and vice director in the Informatics Center at the university and a researcher at the Digital Video Applications Program. Since 2019, he has been a fellow in Productivity and Technological Development and Innovation Extension Level 2 in Brazil. Thank you very much for joining us. You've come a long way. <laughs> and to my right, we have Dr. Elka Rayo from India. She's a principal scientist with the CSIR Institute of Microbial Technology. Her project is working with science, technology, engineering, and math integration in sign-based learning. She is a protein scientist and microbiologist. Dr. Rao has made valuable discoveries of rare bacterial enzymes and developed microbial products for agricultural use while shaping policies and promoting inclusive education in STEM. She holds national and international patents, copyrights, high impact publications, and recognition through cover features and prestigious international journals. And she has written extensively in, uh, in various journals. So please welcome Dr. Raul. And finally, to our, my far right, we have Yoshio Shinoda from Japan. He's the head of the Information Accessibility Promotion Office for Akanyama Broadcasting Company. And he's a newscaster. Uh, and he uh, hosts project, a project incorporating sign language with sports broadcasting. 
Thank you very much for joining us from Japan. Okay, so first we'll get started. Um, I believe we have some PowerPoint slides to show. Asking for support to project them. There we go. So first up, we have Dr. Rao. Oh, thank you. I'm looking up. <laughs> I'm not familiar with all this technology. Here we go. So we each have seven minutes and uh, we have timekeepers who will hold up a sign with a little warning when our time is short. So thank you very much. Namaskar and hello. I thank Allison, the Zero Project, for this wonderful opportunity. And all the data I'll share today is from the experiments that have been done by my deaf friends, members of my team, the lead Digvijay Singh, Hushyar Singh, and Vivekanand. And you see them all over there on the slide at the moment. So I'm going to talk about science, technology, engineering, and maths. And I'm sure you have instantly started thinking about space, the rockets, and the spaceship, cosmos. But science is not always about complex technologies, fancy gizmos, or glorious prof profession, jobs. It's about enriching our everyday lives and understanding the world around us. Every bite of food, every flower's bloom, every gadget in our pocket, it's all about science. Science education starts right where we are, in our backyards, classrooms, communities, in this lecture hall, it's unfortunate, but it is reality. The countless of deaf children have missed out on these wonders of science heavily over the years and due to lack of accessible resources and communication barriers. And that is exactly we are trying to address at Indian Sign Language Enabled Virtual Laboratory of CSIR Institute of Microbial Technology, Chandigarh. My name is Alka Rao, and I am a scientist working in India. Now imagine a virtual laboratory fitted with experiments, simulations, and explanation. All presented in the language that you understand. And this is the heart of our project. A variety of digital content, comics, games, simulations, videos. We cater to a variety of complex topics. We cater to various grade levels, and we are trying to make everything accessible in Indian Sign Language with a team of just six members. For any new project, we face very many challenges. And the first and the biggest for us has been the lack of sign in science. So we started creating vocabulary, STEM vocabulary, sign by sign. But a bulky dictionary nobody likes. So we craft sign only when we really need it. We refer to Greek and Latin roots of scientific words. We keep sign intuitive, accurate, and precise. And we believe making sign only for, for for, for when it is needed. So sign making is not just science or art. Let me tell you, it is a skill. It is imagination, and it is a whole lot of collaboration, innovation, and inclusion. Strangely, 
Most solutions for deaf accessibility focus only on creating signs, signs, and more signs. But does that translate into access to knowledge or deaf empowerment? Maybe not. And this is where our project stands out. We stay focused on creating content for the knowledge. We use or we go to sign creation only say, for example, we want to explain nutrition. We want to talk about biomolecules and we don't have a sign for fatty acid. We just create one sign and we continue with our content creation. And then what we do, we don't leave it there. We immediately integrate that sign into the science stories. We put them into action. We take them to the workshop. We include them in our talks, and that's how we are trying to build an ecosystem of STEM accessibility to deaf. Let me share with you our recent experiment where we collaborated with the Royal Society of Chemistry. We created standardized content and methods for a chemistry workshop. We made 57 students from class 9 to 12 do eight different chemistry experiment hands on in our laboratory and guess who was the teacher? Digvijay, Hoshiar, Vivekanand. They have not studied science, but when they were given the right ambience, the intent was right, the support system was there. Within an year, a deaf student can turn into a science educator. In my experience, I have found them highly intuitive, highly reproducible. That is the biggest asset in a laboratory. And not only that, we have reached out to deaf schools, we collaborate with them, and we have started establishing STEM laboratories. In a city, Karnal in Haryana, we have set up an astronomy lab and we support it digitally through ISL translated content. Bhuvanesh, the teacher in Karnal, keeps telling us the response is amazing. The, the kids every day, they come in full attendance and they come more prepared than the previous day. And Bhuvanesh tells us his teaching has become super easy. Many of us have just started working in this sector and science in STEM are just emerging. And that's why I believe, we believe, my team believes, and I'm sure Alison believes. This is our greatest opportunity to unify the sign culture and create a truly zero barrier inclusive STEM learning system for deaf children of the world. If we cannot do it with STEM, Probably we cannot do it with any other thing. So with this, I would like to share. The impact these three deaf boys have been able to create in my country. We, they have been able to create 400 pieces of ISL enabled content, 100 new signs, and they have been able to connect with 10,000 users online and offline. But as I said, we are just six and we are overwhelmed by the amount of feedback we are getting and the amount of desires and demands our deaf people have asked us to provide for. So we need your support. So let's join hand and let's join hand together to sign for science. Thank you. Take a moment to load the next PowerPoint slide. And your turn. I believe this one. And don't forget the microphone. You prefer to speak up there? Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, so thank you, Alison, for the introductions. Um, Makai Kokaimba from Malawi. So this is Central Africa. 
and I'm happy to be here mainly to learn um, on inclusivity in, in education. So <clears throat> the project which um, I'm working on is uh, on uh, inclusive digital books in Malawi, mainly in rural areas. So we have been already working in rural areas in leading clubs. Uh, this is after school clubs where children go and lead uh, books just to increase their time on text because one of the issues which we are still grappling with now is the uh, children to learn how to read and write. So we still have that problem up to now. But that one was working very well, but doesn't really work okay because we still have children um, with deafness and the visual impaired who cannot um, benefit from the text uh, books which we have been having. So that's why we came up with a, to pilot a, a project called the Digital Book Project. So this one, um, we have had books in sign language and work, working with an organization uh, which is called the a, a Manad in Malawi. That's a, an association of uh, persons with deafness. And um, the importance of this is um, printed books, yes, are working very well, um, but we also have to have uh, digital books, which can also cater for children with uh, both deafness as well as those who are visually impaired. So that's what, that's another issue which is there. And um, wanted to increase the number of contextualized books which children can enjoy in the clubs. So that one we have. Um, so, so the innovation here is that the digital books were loaded in tablets uh, so that the individual children can use, but also uh, these ones we also we are also using projectors. So these are small rechargeable projectors where you charge somewhere and they use at a club. So they go up to more than two hours. So that, that one is working very well for us. For the tablets, individual children can use, they can also use in groups. So that one was also uh, has also been working very well for us. The parents who have smartphones, uh, the teachers we trained, they were also able to put the books on smartphones for the parents. So those parents can work with children at home. So that one has also worked uh, very well. Um, so the impact is that when we looked at this, uh, we have an increased enrollment in reading uh, in the reading clubs. So other children who are not attracted to reading clubs started coming, and even children who uh, now could not use the text, they were able to come uh, to reading clubs. And the project is reaching out to uh, 3,500 uh, learners, and uh, we are using about three, 300 digital uh, books. That's the content which we are using. And uh, we, are also, we have also scaled up to seven school of uh, children with deafness. So in Malawi, we still have specific schools where children with deafness are learning. So we still have that uh, model up to now. And uh, we have had the increased number of teachers who are comfortable with the content, and they're also able to share content with parents. They're also able to use the content. They are now comfortable because we are trained um, to use the digital books, but they are also able to mentor the community literacy volunteers on the same. So we have had um, an increase in those uh, parameters. So the, the success to this um, is in other children who could not even use the, who could not even go to camps, they were able to come to camps. And we have also had stories of children who are able now to join a school, who dropped out of school. But after looking at uh, what the, the digital book project is doing in the camps, they have joined the mainstream schools. So we have a number of examples for that. Um, so the financing of this piloting project was uh, $78,000. And the sustainability is there because when we collected data, we had a high satisfaction rate from the teachers and the reading camp volunteers, but we also had high attendance in reading clubs. Um, we trained early grade teachers who are more comfortable now in coaching the, read, uh, the reading camp facilitators. And the teachers are able to access the, the digital books from Bloom uh, online library to, uh, to put them into the projectors, but also to give to parents. So this one is working very well. 
Our next steps, what vision Malawi would want to scale up this project to reach up to at, at this point to 10,000 children um, who we are working with, but also to make sure that the, the books in digital library are more transferable. It's very easy to transfer them so that they get to the rural communities where children can use them. Um, so basically a reading club looks like that. And one of the child you see there, uh, she could not use digital, she could, cannot use text, but the, uh, the digital content is very easy for her. So she's able to, to enjoy the reading clubs, but also going to school. And the, when you put books in the, and the tablets, uh, children are also able to use them in groups at the reading clubs. So which is also very, very fine. Usually we use text. So we have been giving books uh, like text to children. So reading clubs are very social and casual places where children gather, go and read and interact with text. So it has been working very well in that. But as, as, as I've said, we need more accessibility to make sure that each and every uh, child in that community can access the content we want them to access. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're loading the next one. That will be your shield. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yoshio Shinoda, newscaster of Okayama Broadcasting, or OHK for short, a local TV station in Japan. OHK has aired a special TV program with sign language interpretation for 30 years with the production team of deaf people and sign language interpreters. We call it Inclusive broadcasting. <clears throat> Let me show you what we have broadcasted on TV this month. How did you eat? The live commentary was not only delivered with audio, but also with sign language. Actually, the person who was signing on the screen is the deaf commentator. The point is, it was not just an interpretation. It was live commentary signed by the deaf. Our main goal is to realize the society in which no one is left behind by information. To make our initiative sustainable, we ask the private sector to sponsor our sign language broadcasting. Zero barrier solution should no longer be CSR or charity. We believe entertainment such as sports can foster a more inclusive society. As a new initiative, OHK runs an academy. Please look.
just a visual description of the video playing. Uh, this is a video of a sign language uh, workshop for broadcasters in Japan to teach them some signing and how to actually produce sign language on the screen. There's race cars now on the current screen. And here's a deaf person signing about how important it is to provide commentary in sign language. Without the sign language interpretation, deaf people feel left out. Deaf Olympics, a sports festival, is going to be hosted in Japan. And they're planning to provide sign language commentary. And the goal is to make sure there are no barriers for anyone who wants to attend. Next video just ended. Okay. The Academy and initiative are supported by the Toyota Mobility Foundation. Ms. Hirano, please. Hello, I'm Hirano from the Toyota Mobility Foundation. We started the Mobility for All Idea Contest in 2022. This contest is to implement the ideas into society so everyone, regardless of disability, can enjoy watching motorsports. And we have had the opportunity to collaborate on a project with Okayama Broadcasting. The Deaf Olympics will be held in Tokyo in 2025. We hope that this initiative will sp spread around the world. Okay. Let's try the sign language commentary together now. This is the Japanese sign language. Okay, this is start, start, like this, start. This is straight, straight. This means car, boom, 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 straight. Okay, this is accelerator, accelerator, okay? Let's try, okay? Let's try with the video. Let's do it. Start, start. Okay. Showing start. a video of race cars and we're Go, 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 time. go. Engine, engine, piston. Go straight, break, break, break. Speed down, speed down, please. <laughs> Let's try. Let's try corner, corner, turn left, turn left, corner. Next. Accelerator. Boom, 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 boom. Helping cup, helping cup. Next. Oh, off the track. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> How did you like it? It was a moment which everyone enjoyed regardless of disability or age or gender. And I can see smiles on your face clearly from here. I am now convinced that this is a society with zero barriers. We look forward to joining with you all and creating a world with zero barriers for everyone. Thank you. Arigato. Next, we'll have Dr. Maraton as we load the PowerPoint now. Can I start? Thank you very much, everyone. I'm so proud to be here. Uh, I have a confession to make to you. I work with sign language, but I don't know to speak, interpret sign language. I'm not proud of it, but today I'll speak to you how it motivates the creation of a dream. In 2009, 
receive a deaf student in your university in Brazil called Ozana. She was our first deaf student. When she started her computer science degree, no teacher in our university know how to speak with her. She communicates using Brazilian sign language. This was a great frustration for us. We think, how we can communicate with her? How can we help her? She lost the first subject in the university. But it's not working. Okay, sorry. Uh, so as a computer science professor that, that you only know to know develop software, we think, how computer science can help? Could you develop an application, a software solution that allow the communication with deaf students? Then the Libras was born. The Libras is a solution that machine translations contents for Brazilian sign language. Portuguese to Brazilian sign language. The idea is that we translate audios, videos, and text to Brazilian sign language. So the, the content in Brazilian sign language in Libras is represented by a 3D avatar. So we don't put a video in my presentation, but I will show you a little bit in my, my cell phone. Uh, here, our avatar is saying, how, how are you? I'm so proud to, I mean, at ZeroCon, I'm so proud to be here. So the dreams become be true, begins. It's not finished. <laughs> but in, in Brazilian context, we develop a, a, a suite of solutions for websites, smartphones, VLD, TV, and cinema in the Brazilian context. Yeah? Our project started in 2009, as Osana in the university. And in 2016, our solutions were launched by the Brazilian federal government in all Brazilian federal government websites. Today, uh, the Libras is implemented in more than 120,000 websites in Brazil, including the websites of Brazilian federal government, chambers of deputies, Federal Senate, and thousands of, of Brazilian websites. We also have around 30 million of downloads daily, more than 1 billion of downloads monthly. And we performed around 3 million of translations in a month. But the dreams, con the dreams con continue. We have a solution to the Brazilian context but we would like to expand these dreams to other countries. How to communicate with deaf users of any countries, if, uh, including other sign language? The dreams continue, you can be part of it. We need funding, we need partnerships to continue this dream. Let's do this dream come true. We are open to collaborations and partnerships. Just to finish, I don't know if I have more time. Okay, I would like to do a special thanks to the Brazilian federal government for finding the Libras, founding the Libras since 2014, enable us to achieve these results. I also extend my congratulations, express special thanks to the two Libras enthusiasts present here, Professor Guido, founder of Lavide and pioneer of the Libras, and Cesar Bonfim, which represents the Brazilian federal government here. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. We do have about uh, 10 or 15 minutes left for questions. And we want to make sure we offer some opportunities for questions from the audience, if you're open. Uh, if you would please, uh, do we have microphones at the tables in the audience? Yes, so if you will use your voice by pushing the button on the table in front of you of the microphone, 
you could ask a question. Yes, please in the front row. Yeah, thank you. I'm Cosma Simnyani from Tanzania. What I find uh, we have a number of innovations that are very important and we really need them. But uh, the questions that I see all the time, it is that uh, these innovations are done by experts and sometimes less involvement of people with disabilities themselves. And one area that I feel like uh, if we are to make a difference, because I have already seen, if we are to make a difference, is the area of trying to create some possible adapted curriculum for basic ICT skills for persons with disabilities. With my experience since 2008, I have classes for the blind where the blind are teachers. And with that initiative, Last year, the government of the United Republic of Tanzania employed a blind person as accountant in the Ministry of Health. What does that imply? Basic IT skills will navigate and will help everybody to come in. And I also have ICT for the deaf. That was I was looking at how we created these signs. These uh, skills I started way back 2015. The question when I started was first going international conference like I'm now here. How do we develop ICT skills so that I wanted also a deaf to teach a fellow deaf. And now the experience has sparked a lot. Deaf are doing a lot. I think maybe in this is the, if we are to remove barriers with the coming innovations that are coming up, artificial intelligence and others. I think we need to help these people with disabilities with at least basic ICT skills so that some of the things they can innovate. For example, I didn't imagine one day a blind person can repair a PC, but now they are repairing. I didn't imagine a, a blind person who, who do not have even a basic education certificate can compose music. And now they are doing it. I think let us change, let us try. Of course, the innovation as they are going, let us continue. Thank but you, let us go back also to the basics. Try to create centers for ICT, basic ICT skills training. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I love your message. And, and really, of all the programs that we're presenting on today, I think everyone is including deaf people in a very positive, active yes. manner. So we have some four really strong examples here, but your message is so important. Thank you for raising it and sharing it to remind everyone in the room. Again, from what we heard this morning, every uh, nothing about us without us. We must empower others. Any other questions from the audience? I have a few questions for the panelists if they're no. Oh, yes, we have one back here. Person moving to the microphone. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. My name is Ghadir Al Haris. I'm uh, from the Higher Council for Persons with Disabilities in Jordan. I, we are really interested in the, the very good presentation you gave, and especially for the sign language commentary. Um, it is a revolution because nobody did it before. At least we didn't hear about it before. We used to have like sign language interpreters just signing what the commentaries are doing. So my question is, what does it require to be a sign language commentary? I don't think it's enough to be able to sign. Is there any requirements uh, to do that? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, they not only perform sign language interpretation, but uh, also provide live commentary. In order to do so, they research in advance and deliver the information in their language. Um, I want to join in with you someday. Thank you. We have another question, please, from the audience. 
Yeah, I wanted to ask Makaiko, because uh, I know he didn't have a great deal of time in his presentation. Um, I'm Edward Winter from World Vision as well. Um, so um, I'm wondering if you could explain a bit more about the process of content creation and the role of Manad in the creation of sign language content and how potentially it could be um, created by other organizations um, associated with deaf persons and the materials also accessed um, by other organizations. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you, Edward. Um, the digital books which we created, we also have sign language digital books which we are created by Manad. In Malawi, Manad is uh, an association for uh, persons uh, with deafness. So we have uh, sign language uh, uh, content as well. So this one um, can be accessed because they are on Bloom Library, uh, which is um, um, hold by an organization called Bloom Inc. is in the USA. So it's a large library and their English book. There are almost many languages of books there. But we started working with Manad on, on Malawi Sign Language books, which has also been working uh, very well. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? I have plenty for the panelists. Um, I think uh, a common question or a good goal for you attending this conference this week would be to interact and connect with other people who are participating. We have over a thousand people in our audience throughout the week. Uh, my question to you panelists is, if you are seeking any support from others as a result of this conference, what would be your request of people in the audience? What kind of support are you perhaps seeking to advance your programs in your own country or perhaps to expand? This is an opportunity to share your thoughts. Okay, so thank you for, for the question also. Uh, in fact, we need the, the, the main uh, need of our team is as we have to expand the solution, our main idea is expand the solution to other sign language, other countries. Uh, there is two more uh, uh, needs, no? two main needs. The first of all, it's funding for, for develop the, the solution, adapt, the extend the solution to other sign languages. The second one is we also need the involvement of specialists in the target sign language. So if, for example, if you develop, uh, extend the solution to the American sign language, for example, we have need to be with us specialists in, in American sign language, deaf users uh, uh, in American sign language. So it's, it's our main requirement, <laughs> our main needs here. Yeah, um, for for us, I think there are two parts. The first one is the manner at which you work with. Uh, they have many capacity gaps. Uh, they're having experience, yes, but they have many capacity gaps up to now. Um, what vision, uh, like what vision is gathering experience on the inclusivity. Uh, the other issue is also on devices, sustainable, sustainable devices, not just like devices, but the ones which are sustainable, which can work well in low areas. For example, the projectors we use are good because we can charge them somewhere and then we can use um, electricity is not very accessible and these uh, solar devices, we use them in other places, but they're also expensive um, as well as the, the, the tablets. But the ones which are more sustainable are good ones because for what vision on this project, we are reaching out to 60 reading, uh, reading clubs, but we are working with uh, more than 1,300 reading clubs. So, yeah, those are the main ones. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Alison. It's a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to uh, put my ask here. I have come here to explore the possibility of creating or building a, a global partnership to harmonize science in the STEM subjects. This is, as I said before, the whole area is in a rudimentary state. We, it's just developing. So there's a lot of scope in this area to harmonize right away when we, we all have started making these signs. 
and with STEM, the opportunity is real because a lot of definitions, a lot of concepts are precise. There cannot be very many meaning of a of a STEM terminology. Also, a lot of these terms and words derive their roots from Latin and Greek roots. So that makes the job more precise. So STEM is the opportunity for different sign cultures to come together. This is the stage where we all who want to work in sign creation, content creation for deaf accessibility, we have to come together and we have to start harmonizing our work right away. That will boost any future AI solution in the sector and has potential to revolutionize, revolutionize the entire STEM accessibility sector for deaf around the world. Thank you. Um, we would like to contribute to develop a sign, develop a sign language ecosystem in Japan um, with a special focus on the 2025 Deaf Olympic, which will be held in Tokyo. Thank you. I saw in another session where the pan, uh, the facilitator asked members of the audience if there were any NGOs in the audience for which perhaps our panelists could connect with. So I have to ask if you are an NGO looking to support or fund other programs, if you would raise your hands, please. I think I saw one hand raise. No, very good. Two, thank you so much. We have another five minutes. Um, any more questions from the audience before I take a turn? Yes, sir. Sorry again, Edward, Edward Winter from World Vision. Just want to emphasize that um, you know World Vision was part of a co-investment with USAID and the Australian government in a program called All Children Reading. So the Bloom platform as part of that was made uh, more accessible so that you can then print braille copies from it. You can um, create sign language content embedded into the system. It's very easy to use. Um, it does require some uh, work on it from lang linguistic experts, but basically the platform does enable anyone in their own language to create digital books. Um, so I'm really hoping that having funded it, that everyone will use it. So um, it's Bloom Library. Let me just say. Bloomlibrary.org. Um, so I would encourage you really to explore that. Um, we've mainly used it for um, uh, supplementary materials because, but um, I know Oxfam, I'm sorry, UNICEF, um, uh, Juliet, who's also at the conference here, has been working on a program to make um, textbooks accessible, including embedding sign language. But this is a, a slightly more accessible platform for you all um, to be able to do that. If that's um, we also have developed um, some materials um, to guide people who want to create sign language content on how to do that from a technical perspective, what the requirements are to create video um, content and embed that in there. So um, uh, a lot of that, if um, contact Makaiko, myself, um, um, or and and for a whole list of accessible solutions, you can go to all children reading um, website, which temporarily forgets. But if you look up all children reading, it will uh, come up. Thank you so much. I have a question for Dr. Maradon. Um, just curious to know, uh, we are familiar with artificial intelligence coming fast and furiously. I'm curious with your avatar, if you're exploring ways to incorporate AI to offer a little more expression on your avatar and make more modifications. Excellent question. Uh, yeah, in fact, our solution is AI-based, you know, AI-based solution. We have a machine translation engine that performed the translation from Portuguese to Brazilian Sign Language in the text format. We use a representation of Brazilian Sign Language in text. So 
the other part of the solution use a, a, a software solution that convert this text to 3D, né? to 3D. So we are also researching in our lab how to replace the avatar by a human. To, to do this task, we are, we are researching how we use, for example, the solutions used in deepfake, a generative adversary network. So we are working on it. It's very exciting. I can't wait to see the next round. Thank you so much. Any other questions from the audience? Question? Yes. <laughs> okay. Don't forget your mic. Maybe, of course, now we we see there are a lot of um, challenges with deafness, but uh, all the solutions about um, we are looking at uh, sign language and the other things. But uh, what efforts are there? to develop some screening tools so that we can prevent many people not becoming deaf. Because I see we are focusing into the sign, but uh, not much on how we screen. We have a project that we started uh, just uh, screening over 1,000 children in Tanzania with Sintef from Norway, where I'm working as a principal investigator. We found around 20 to 30 percent of children who are thought as non-disabled having hearing loss. I think now we need, apart from developing the sign language, let us also find the means and ways on how the technology can help us in order to reduce the burden of hearing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we're up at uh, just five minutes before the top of the hour, and my understanding is we're live streaming. So we've been asked to stop a little early to allow for the next session. I want to thank all the panelists, not only for traveling to be here to share, but also for your hard work throughout the year to support improved communication and inclusion of people who are deaf. Let's give them a round of applause, please. <laughs>